YouTube channel from the Ham Shack with NJ4Z. My name is John Gendron. I'm an amateur radio operator in Rock Hill, South Carolina. My call sign is November Juliet 4 Zulu. And I'd like to welcome you to the channel and to my Ham Shack here on the second floor of my house. So, what is this channel about? Well, this channel is going to be about amateur radio and um, all things amateur radio. So, we're going to talk about gear, we'll talk about operating. Um, we'll talk about the hot things like POTA and SODA and contesting and um, you know we'll talk about local clubs and, and how it is to be in a club and running clubs. We'll talk about um, field day. Um, you know we'll do some live streams. Um, so we're going to have a lot of fun with amateur radio and the aspects of amateur radio. So there's a lot of channels out there and um, What's going to be different about this one? Well, um, you know, I don't know that it will be that much different than a lot of the channels out there, other than the fact is when I'm looking at amateur radio, I look at it from two lenses. So, to give you a little bit about my background, I've been an amateur radio operator for four and a half years. Um, I'm an amateur extra, so I hold uh, that, that license class. And um, my background is engineering. Um, I'm an engineer by education and trade. Um, and I also um, have a little bit of an artistic streak. Um, did a lot of art classes and, and um, uh, art appreciation in high school. And so I've got a little bit of a dichotomy there of um, art and, and engineering and, and that sciencey technology eye. And then you have the softer art eye for things. And so my view on amateur radio comes from both sides. Um, so hopefully that'll um, uh, lend to some difference to what other channels are out there that may be more technical or maybe more humorous. Um, you know, I want to try and in incorporate you know the humor of amateur radio because uh, we are we are a bunch of cut ups if if you really think about it, and we have a lot of fun in this hobby, and we're very sciencey and very technology oriented, and and a lot of us whether we realize it or not, there's a lot of art to what we do in amateur radio. So um, I want to bring all, all of that to bear as, as, as one, one, you know, one coherent unit to uh, uh, give you a different, maybe a different, a little different look at the hobby. Um, but anyway, so, you know, what's the purpose of the channel? Well, uh, the purpose of this channel is education mostly and, and, and entertainment. So, you know, we want to educate ourselves about the hobby and, and learn about different subjects and and um, we also want to enjoy it while we're doing it so um, you know it's not going to be all hard science and you know drab and and, and and drab's not a good word you know very technical and detail I mean we're going to have that but we're going to have fun doing it and that's what I hope to instill anyways um, you know when we talk about amateur radio and and what it really is at its basis, I look at it from a you know, from that those two standpoints of the engineer in me and the artist in me, and and what I I've, I've been involved with amateur radio for four and a half years, like I said, and, and you know I've done a lot of different things in amateur radio. One of the things I've, I've done is I've become in leadership in in some positions in the club, our local club. Uh, I'm serving as the current president for the York County Amateur Radio Society. I'm also involved with uh, emergency management as I'm the emergency coordinator for York County Aries, um, which is our emergency uh, services arm of amateur radio for those of you that don't, don't know it. And um, so in leadership, you know, we, we, we're pushing our clubs and, and pushing other amateurs to improve themselves and to get involved. and. And so one of the things we had a big push in our club, and we, we were glad we did with this COVID situation, is we embraced the technology that was out there. We've had some very generous donations uh, from some club members that helped us um, build a very, very nice um, editing and video uh, production uh, system that we have at our clubhouse. So we've embraced technology, and we've gone, during this time of COVID, we've gone into virtual meetings via Microsoft Teams, and we've done a bunch of other things by streaming or keeping our people engaged by by streaming presentations, live streaming on YouTube through our video production system at the clubhouse. 
So one of the things when we embraced this technology is we wanted to have kind of a brand for it. Um, and so I was tasked with coming up with kind of a, an intro video. And I call it the pillars of amateur radio. Um, and when you look at amateur radio, there are several things that uphold amateur radio as a hobby. And it's art, it's science, it's technology, it's education, it's service, it's community, and it's legacy. So we'll talk about that in another video and get in depth into each of those pillars. But, you know, when you look at amateur radio through those different silos or pillars, whatever you want to call them, um, it all leads and, and comprises to one, one thing, and that's the adventure that is amateur radio. And it, it really is an adventure. Um, there's a challenge portion to it where we're always challenged to learn, and, but, but we're all on this adventure together as amateur radio operators. So why did I want to do this channel? Well, I've been thinking about it for a while. Um, again, the artistic streak in me, the creative juices got going. And um, after doing a few live streams with the club and a few presentations with the club, it really kind of stoked that fire. Um, and it brought out the part of me that wants to express my love for the hobby, my passion for the hobby. And, and, and so I've been thinking about it for a while. And I did a couple of live streams with a local amateur radio operator here who has a YouTube channel. Uh, VJ Array or uh, is his channel. It's uh, AE4VJ, uh, Brad Humphreys, and um, he's got a pretty good following out there, and he's done some really quality work. and And he was kind of pushing me a little bit, I think, to uh, uh, get involved with this. And, and having the opportunity to do a couple live streams with him and our state section manager, Mark Tarpley, N4UFP, um, really kind of set that really my gears going and getting my mind around doing this. And then. I was watching Ham Radio Crash Course. Uh, Josh had, had challenged um, other amateur radio operators. You know, in order to grow this hobby, we've got to make it. We've got to educate people on the hobby, and we've got to make it an exciting. You know, to see, let them see. Not that we're making it any more exciting than it is, but let them see our excitement, our passion, our love for the hobby, and how much fun this hobby is, and what you can garner from this hobby. Um, the only way to do that is to document our journeys as individual operators and in groups of operators and let people see that and how better to do that than to build a channel or to, to put videos live on whether you're Facebook, uh, Instagram, you know, for God's sake, TikTok, uh, if you want to do that, or, um, or, or YouTube, right? So we're all here, um, you know, out there with all this passion and all this knowledge and we're all out there operating and I don't think many of us are documenting that and if we get out there and document it and other people see that it may light a fire in their mind and I, I think you know for me to get in this hobby I need somebody to be passionate about it to, to push me and challenge me to, to get into the hobby I had a love for radio since I was a young kid I mean my dad you know we grew up um, didn't have a whole lot but we didn't want for anything so amateur radio was a little out of reach for my father and I think he would have gone there if, if he had the opportunity uh, but um, he got into CB and when I say get into CB he had a mobile unit in his car it wasn't anything elaborate um, but he enjoyed it so much he talked to his friends you know going back and forth to work and when we were on road trips as a family he would get on that and talk to different people and, and he just enjoyed it immensely and it some point in time when I was nine or ten years old he bought a pair of used walkie-talkies, it's been walkie-talkies from a, uh, a friend of his who was in the CB and gave me the walkie-talkies. My friends and I used them, we had a good time you know out in the field playing war or whatever um, but one of the fondest memories I have of me and my dad when I was a youngster was he had a habit of calling me when he would come home from work on the CB to my walkie-talkies, about two blocks away, I mean it wasn't a great distance, um, but he would he would start to call me, and I think a lot of times he drove slower that last two or three blocks, just so we can extend that conversation a little bit. But um, you know, it, it was a wonderful part of growing up, and it, and, it, and it built that that thing for amateur radio in the back of my head, or radio in the back of my head, not amateur radio, but just radio in general. And then my after my dad passed away, and even a little before, we went to visit my uncle in Canada, my dad's younger brother, and, and 
he, Victor Echo 2, Echo Kilo Hotel, his name was Marcel, and uh, it was my dad's youngest brother, and, and um, he, uh, he was an amateur radio operator, and I cannot overstate the amount of passion he had for amateur radio. It, it was, it was so much a part of him, and he, inst and when I got to see that passion, and he was pushing me to, to get involved, and when I really got to see that passion, it kind of lit it in me, and, and then you start thinking about after my dad passed, I start thinking about, you know, how much time do I have, and you start to work on that bucket list in your head, right, and one of the things on there was amateur radio operator, and with Marcel's guidance and push, um, God rest his soul, he's a silent key now, but he really pushed me into this hobby, and he kidded about it. One of the last times we were together is he said, I created a monster. He said, I think if I cut you, you'd bleed RF, and I think he's right. Um, I've got such a passion for this hobby, and, and the reason I have the passion is because of the adventure and the challenge. You know, when you look at it and you say, okay, you're sitting here talking to radio, what's the adventure? Well, you know, whether you're here, you're in the field doing field day or POTA or, you know, emergency services, whatever, there's an adventure component to it. And for me, sitting in my shack, when I put on the headphones and, and I pick up the key, what little CW I do, or I'm on the microphone and, and working phone or sideband, um, and I start calling CQ, everything that could go wrong in the world that, that, that you know I may have going on in my world melts away. And I'm in my radio world. And I get to talk to people that I would never have the opportunity to talk to on a day-to-day -day basis for the most part, especially on HF. Um, you know, some of the memorable QSOs I've had, it just, you know, it just amazes me at the, the quality of the people I've been able to talk to and the, the conversations that I would never have had the opportunity to have if it had not been from the adventure or, or ham radio. And, and, you know, I... I had a conversation with a World War II vet. Um, I don't know if he's still alive or not, but you know, I will never forget that conversation. He was a, a bombardier on a B-17 flying fortress during World War II. And the stories he told me, I, I think I spent about 40 minutes on it until the conditions changed and, and, he, and, and we, we were losing contact with each other and, and I wanted to sign with him properly so I didn't lose him. But, you know, I would never have had an opportunity to, to talk to that gentleman other than through, the, through amateur radio. And that's part of the, I guess you'd call it magic of amateur radio. I mean, yes, there's, there's science and technology and, and all those parts and pieces and the physics go along with it. But in, in reality, it's almost like magic because we're bouncing a signal from our station to somewhere else in the globe. And we don't know exactly where that signal is going to go. We do know some by our education and our understanding of propagation where it's kind of going to go. But... A lot of times it'll surprise us, and that's the magic of radio, right? You never know. I can remember sitting here, and, and I wasn't a general for very long, and I was... One of the things I'm not afraid to do, I don't have mic fright, and I'm not a shy person, as you probably can tell. But I get on the air, and I call CQ quite a bit. And um, one morning early, and, um, you know, about 5.30 or so in the morning, um, I was on 40 meters and had gotten up, waking up with a cup of coffee. It was middle of summer. I start calling CQ, and I had a gentleman from Papua New Guinea come back to me. Absolute thrill. It was it was absolutely magical to think that I was able to get a contact to Papua New Guinea, which is the only one I've ever had. Um, and I've had one that my first Australian contact, uh, Victor Ke Kilo Two, see so, so Sugar Romeo, um, Victor Echo two, or Victor Kilo Two. Um, Sierra Radio, uh, Chris, and um, I think he's in somewhere outside of Sydney there. Um, he came back to my call, and it was the first time I've ever had a Australian station, first contact ever. So, um, just it's just amazing that, you know, and magical that the things you can find. And, and the other part of this whole thing is we all have a common bond with radio, so there's always something to kind of talk about. So you can build a friendship pretty quickly. And I can tell you personally, I've made some lifelong friends through amateur radio, at least in a local area here, through the club and through talking to them on the repeater and getting together, whether at local ham fest or, or at um, 
um, you know, just get-togethers for lunch. Um, I've made lifelong friends that, even if we don't have amateur radio any longer, we'll still be friends, but I would have never have met these people had it not been through amateur radio. And that's the magic of it. And so, you know, when we talk about the channel and, and what I want to accomplish with the channel and the purpose of this channel, Number one is to educate people, maybe people who don't know anything about amateur radio. I might be able to find some folks that, that I can bring into the hobby and, and, and you know, uh, extend the legacy of the hobby by bringing new people in um, and educate them on it. It's to help other hams, whether they're new or, or they've been around for a while and, and maybe I have some expertise in one part of the hobby they don't, and maybe I can help them there. And to learn from other people when they make comments on, on the channel to uh, learn from them as well, uh, but it's, I hope what it really does is instill a passion and express my passion and love for this hobby and help others enjoy it and, and again, that, that's the whole thing with amateur radio is we're all a community of, of operators uh, and very diverse and we all have different interests outside this hobby but we all have this one thing together, and, and, and we're ambassadors for not only ourselves, but our local areas and amateur radio as a whole. So, you know, we, we get to, to play around with what I call the best hobby in, on the planet. Um, the one that will challenge you the most, I think. The one you can learn the most from the one that will bring you the most enrichment back to your life of learning about other people and other places and and having that connection and making friends you know again it, it, that's what I hope that people take away from this channel if nothing else I, I want you to see the passion I have for it and maybe hopefully that passion will burn in you and you'll become an operator or, or or join us on this journey and maybe you'll start a channel too and we'll all be able to bring in more people but with that, I, you know, I'd like to thank you for tuning in, and um, I really am excited to start this journey with you all, and um, hopefully uh, we'll continue down this road, and, and um, we'll have many more opportunities to uh, interact with each other. With that, um, I will say 73. God bless you all, and this is NJ4Z, and I'm out.